and today I'm going to demonstrate how to use this. This is a French knitting bobbin. It's a bit different from the ones you might have otherwise seen. I made this myself. It's just made from a simple disc of wood which I cut out with a hole saw in a drill um, with six pieces of dowling driven into it equally spaced around the central hole. They're about probably a centimetre and a half apart. You can make these really any size you like actually. This one has six pegs, some only have four, um, but you can make them like this one which has 14, or you can make them like this one which has 42. I'll talk a bit about what uh, we can do with this one and its medium-sized brother later on. First let's have a look at how you use the standard knitting bobbin. This is just double knit wool and to start off you pass the loose end of the wool through the middle, pull off a piece about that long, six inches or so, and then with this end of the wool wrap anti-clockwise around each of the pins in turn. So I'm just going anti-clockwise around all of those like that. Now, that then leaves us back, back where we started. That's the first pin we wrapped around there, and that's the first little loop of yarn just on there. And then this this is the working end of the yarn. And what I'm going to do now is lay that across the top of the pin there. So this is the working end of the yarn which is attached to the ball. And this is the loop which is the first loop we threaded on which is attached to this loose end. And now all, all we need to do is grab hold of that bit there. I'm just using a double-ended knitting needle here. You can use any kind of knitting needle or a crochet hook. is also quite good. Just grab hold of that loop of wool there, lift it up and take it over the back of that pin like that and then just maybe a little, give it a little tug on that loose end there. And then rotate the dolly slightly and do the same with the next one. So we just lift that over the end there and carry on. To start with it's sometimes a little bit tricky just until you get the tension right just for the first few times round and after that it seems to settle down okay now we're back at the start again and this is the first loop we cast over here and as you see because we because we were laying one over the top and then bringing another loop over the, over the top of that and dropping it off the back of the peg we're always leaving a loop of wool on the peg and so that's the loop of wool we left on the peg last time and this time we're going to again bring the yarn above the top of it like that grab hold of that one and take it over the top and again just carry on all the way around and there will always be one loop of wool on the peg left from the last time around and you just take that over the top of the working yarn and drop it over the back of the peg each time and carry on very much like that all the way and so after a while you can see there's something starting to form here in the middle some sort of knitting type of thing in the middle I'm just going to carry on for a little while what you sometimes have to do also is just give that a little tug on there just to keep the tension anyway I'm going to carry on for a bit and then we'll have a review and we'll see what uh, what we've actually started making Okay, I've been knitting for about uh, a couple of minutes now and as you can see there's a kind of spiderweb pattern emerging in the middle there and underneath there's a piece of knitting and it's this is your knitted cord and this can be used for all kinds of things. You can put this knit, uh, stitch this together into a spiral and make all kinds of things out of it. Bags, placemats, um, tea cozies, hats. Um, really your imagination is the limit there. I'm going to finish off now, show you how to finish off um, this strand. Obviously if I was doing this for real I'd, I'd do this a lot longer and I'd probably do something with it. To change colour all you really need to do is just snap off this, this uh, yarn here, tie on another piece and carry on and it'll just work itself in. But I'm actually going to finish this off now and show you how to, how to cast off. So I'll leave myself about maybe six inches of wool there and just get rid of that end. Next then is what I need to do to, to finish off and make sure this doesn't unravel when I take it off the, off the bobbin is to pass this end through each one of the loops on here as I cast it off. So to do that it's very much the same as doing the knitting except that I'm going to 
lift that over and leave it on top there and then I'm going to pull that through and then the same on the next one same as the normal stitch, lift that over except instead of leaving that on there I pull it right through and lift that over pull the end through Okay, and that's because that's threaded through each with the end of the loops, you can just pull that tight and that brings it to a nice close and it won't unravel. So there you are, that's how to do French knitting with the Atomic Shrimp French Knitting Bobbin. Um, you can do lots of other things with this, you can knit with other things like there's a yarn you can make out of plastic um, and you can stitch that together to make bags and all kinds of things. Have a look on AtomicShrimp.com, loads of ideas, search for knitting or recycling on there. As I said earlier, um, I made this bobbin myself and as you can see it's really well worn and well used. Um, it has six pegs for no particular reason. Um, that's, that's the slightly larger one I made with 14 pegs. This one, instead of producing a thin strand like that, which is, and they are tubes, as you can imagine, if, if you've got that just a little bit bigger, then with this one you, you end up with a, something that you could maybe make into a um, a sock for a mobile phone. Um, this one here, which has 42 pegs, this one produces um, a, a very long, broad, tubular scarf, um, which you can use either to, to knit a full length scarf or you can use it to make string bags. You can use it to make hats as well. Um, anyway, there's a lot more detail about all of these on the Atomic Shrimp website. Take a look at atomicshrimp.com.